All right, let's identify some digital evidence. Now, I know what you're thinking. It may be a little bit too simple of an idea in this skill to say, let's identify some evidence. It's too good to be true, right? Well, no, because identifying digital evidence is just that. It's making sure that we as investigators can come in and say, let's identify everything that we can that is potentially digital evidence. Now, I say potentially because that's where there is a little bit of a trick behind this. And I'm going to give a little bit of a demonstration here on this desk. So let's look around and see what we got here real quick. We obviously have our phone here that is um, a mobile device that we can use for digital evidence. But we also have like a USB hub here. Now we know that a USB hub cannot store anything. It just passes information through it. So we know that that's not particularly evidence, but we do have under this desk right here is where the actual desktop is. So we can go ahead and retrieve that. Or if we find it in a running state, get the hard drive and the volatile memory captures off of it. But there's one thing on this desk that I want to point out. And it's, I brought it up in the previous skill, which is my Legos. And this is where we have to keep a keen eye for some things during investigation. This has happened to me on a couple of occasions too, where I've had to go back and recover things that didn't look like what they were. So the first one here, I'm going to hold this up to the camera just a little bit. It's a regular Lego. And I use it to cover up the switch on the back of my Lego right here. Because when I push out on it, let's see if I can do that real quick. It turns it to a USB stick. Now this is a 64 gig USB stick. And I keep this on me in my pocket because I have an, uh, live operating system on there, Hiram's which we'll get into way later in the course and touch on some of the stuff that's on there. But this is kind of stuff that we have to look out for when we're scanning the scene, because the first part of the investigation is, is that we go in and identify what's actually going on. As far as the uh, on scene portion, we don't touch anything. We just make sure that we can see everything, log everything that we can because that's part of the identification process. Okay, so we all know that I like doing real world examples and another piece of digital evidence or in, uh, during the investigation process that it may hide underneath our noses sometimes is the modern vehicle or modern electronic device in our household. Now I wanna show you with my personal truck here how this can be used as digital evidence. As luck would have it, it didn't record right, so I'm having to do this again. But what I have in my hand right now is an OBD2 reader, and every vehicle after 1995 has the same universal port. And this is, uh, I forgot the name of the uh, port, but it plugs in right under the dashboard. And the reason that we do this is because we can retrieve digital evidence from this truck. And once it plugs in with the ignition key, uh, with the key in the ignition and turn on to accessory, at least, we can actually start recovering data from this vehicle. Now, let me get in frame shot here because I've got this tilted a little weird, but where would this come in handy? Um, we would be able to read mileage, even though let's say the physical odometer is rolled back or the LED display on your dashboard is uh, saying something else. We would be able to do the verification of digital logs on this vehicle in the, in the course of another investigation. Let's say we want to verify that somebody actually drove on a certain day and how much mileage that they drove since their last fill up. We can recover the records from their credit card on when their last fill up was. We can go to the station and figure out which vehicle that they were in based on camera if they have it. And then we can also go and see on the vehicle how many miles they've driven since that fill up on that day. And so this is a lot of evidence capturing that we as investigators have to be cognizant of to make sure that we capture everything along the way if it's needed to corroborate other evidence in the course of that uh, suspected crime. Now, there's also another common thing with vehicles, especially as digital investigators working at the local uh, with the local Leos, and that is the... Uh, breathalyzer ignition lock and so there's a lot of log tampering with those and people trying to get around that and that interfaces directly with the vehicle's CAN bus system which is usually on the ECM underneath the hood uh, near the car battery. Now is that important to know all the time? Absolutely not and we've talked about this already we're jack of all trades master of none but these are just little tidbits that we pick up along the way and we make documentation 
as kind of a reference to make sure that we know where some of this stuff is just in case we have to run across it again. This demonstration is just to show that digital evidence can be found anywhere at any time and it's on us as investigators to keep our eyes and ears open to make sure that we can capture anything and everything that we need to assist and advise during the investigation. So we're back here in the studio after we've done the truck demonstration. Now, yes, it's a bit extreme, but sometimes digital investigations call for pulling evidence from any reliable source. And this also makes us aware that there is evidence, digital evidence, in nearly anything and everything that has some sort of memory capacity. And in this day and age, for all you youngsters out there, your smart refrigerator telling you that your bananas are getting stale has memory in it too, where digital evidence can be pulled from. And more importantly, we can incorporate the gathering of evidence through uh, legal means, which is if you're, we're working for the Leos, we can try to do a digital evidence discovery warrant to organizations like Amazon and their fancy little doorbell that tells you when people are showing up through the Skynet. But again, that's kind of a bit of extreme example. The whole point behind this is, is to make sure that we as digital uh, investigators through the inst incident handling process are aware enough to be able to go in and find any kind of evidence that could support our case and investigation whatsoever. And if it has memory, if it has a storage ca uh, capability or capacity on that device, then it's digital evidence. In the next nugget, we're going to be talking about understanding the disk and the basics of a hard drive. And this ties into the fact that it can store something, so it is digital evidence. And it's probably one of the core components that we need to understand as digital investigators with regards to how things are stored and how things are read. So I look forward to seeing you in that one. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.